Hello. So today I'm going to dig up some of my juice and artichokes and I'm going to do a, a bed in the no dig veg area just to see if they come on a bit better. They suffered in, in the drought this year. But they're usually way taller than this. Easy two, over two meters and, and just much fuller. Um, also, I've been getting deer in here in my um, potato patch. This is just on the edge of the potato patch and the deer have just been eating them down. So I just want to get some up into the no-dig garden, do a bed there. Um, I've got Jerusalem artichokes here and globe artichokes just up from them up there at the side. Um, so Jerusalem artichokes, they're the, the sort of thing you harvest them in the autumn. And um, they're kind of, you can use them in any way really that you can use a potato. Um, they've got a bit of a nutty sort of flavour to them. They're a bit knobbly, gnarly, a bit funny looking, but I don't even bother trying to peel them. They're, they're just a bit too awkward to peel, but I've got like a vegetable scrubbing brush and I'll just give them a good scrub under the tap um, and, and then just use them like you would potatoes. Main, mainly I, I'd probably do them in stir fries more than anything else, um, but, but they're a nice veg and they're, um, they're good because you can just harvest your own tubers and plant again. So as literally as you dig them, you can literally just leave a few tubers in the ground and they just keep coming back every year it's a sort of perennial veg so i'm trying to get a bit more into this sort of perennial veg sort of food forest type idea obviously with everything that's happening in, in the world at the moment you know there's going to be food shortages i was chatting to a farmer on a job just the other day and he said that they're cutting right back because of cost they, they're cutting back on their chickens because of the cost of feed and they're cutting back on um all their arable too just because of they, they're the price of fertilizers and things like this but you know obviously you can argue about this sort of thing all day but just from my point of view the more veg and, and things that i can have that are perennial or that i can easily save my own seed from going forward then it just puts me in a better position for my family to be able to provide food um so yeah so obviously the deer have been hammering these a bit and in the drought this year they just haven't done as well and I, I don't know what type these are a friend of mine just gave me a little bag an old old lady had cleared a border for her and she had them in the border because she liked the flowers and he just cleared them and he said oh do you want them so i said yeah i'll have them i chucked them in here um and they've been here for quite must be 10 years now and i as i encroach on the path i just dig a few out and i leave the rest in but this year they haven't done particularly well they, they've always usually done a lot better than this so i'm gonna have a dig and i'm gonna move some up so i don't know what size they'll be I should imagine because of the drought they'll be a lot smaller than normal. In fact the first few little tubers there are tiny tiny. So if I can get some bigger ones from further back then they're the ones I'm going to plant. So they're still not massive. I mean, you do get them about that sort of size normally, but I'm gonna I'm gonna have enough to, to harvest and plant anyway, even if they are a bit small, hopefully in the no dig area being being moister all year. They'll uh, they'll come on a lot better. All it is I had to prioritise a little bit this summer. We had the heat wave. I've got no mains water down here. Um so during that heat wave I had to put an IBC tank in my van and I was bringing one to two thousand liters a week down as well as my storage i've got about fourteen thousand liters of storage but that doesn't last very long in a heat wave trust me it really doesn't it's, it's always been okay in the past but since i've done the veg garden I've, I've realized i need to have a lot more water storage um so i just had to prioritize things and this side with the globe artichokes and the jerusalem artichokes was just one thing that i thought i'm, I'm just not going to water them i'm just going to leave them in and leave them to it so yeah they haven't done as well you can see they're quite dinky but what i will do well i'm just planting one tree i think i'll probably just snip that stalk and i'll just plant these entire stems with the roots and two or three little tubers and just get those in the no dig garden and i think i think next year in the no dig they, they should come on and be as big as they can possibly be you quite often get get ones about that sort of size they don't get a lot bigger than that um but yeah i mean that's fine so we'll go and do that in a, in a second but yeah so perennial veg i've got my perennial kales um so i will try and 
take some cuttings from those to see if I can bring those on as well. But this is the sort of thing I want to do a bit more of. Um, obviously, I've got asparagus and things like that. Things that just come up every year. Obviously, things like beans, any any other sort of beans, really, climbing beans, French beans, runner beans, all these things. It's easy to save seed from. Um, and that's, that's the sort of thing I want to do. So I'm going to get up what I can of these and just do one bed. I just want to see how, how one bed does next year. And, uh, and then we'll go from there, whether I decide to do any more or not, we'll see. So I'm spacing the tubers out approximately a foot apart. I've just done it by eye, but it's approximately a foot apart. Um, they do say if you're going to have a double row to do them five feet apart. Well, obviously my beds are only about four foot wide, but, um, I'm just going to do a double row. So they're, they're probably two foot apart that way and a foot apart that way. Um, that's 30 tubers in some of the spaces where the tubers are a bit small, I'd put two or three. Um, and I've also got a few of these little stems where there's three or four little, little tubers on the stem. They really didn't do very well uh, with the heat waves, like I said. So, you know, most of them that I did snap off were about that sort of size, but that, they'll all come and hopefully next year it, they'll grow enough to give me a good crop. But um, I put this next to the asparagus bed. So this end of the holding is more sort of where I'm doing my perennial type stuff, but also because I get a lot of wind coming from the west. So the asparagus ferns, once I finish harvesting those, and when these are up in the summer, they, they should sort of shelter the bed a little bit from the winds that are coming this way, and the rest of the veg is that way. So it just gives it a bit of a shelter. My perennial kales are just over here behind the camera too. So I'm just going to get these planted. I'm putting them, they say, four to six inches deep. So I'm going sort of just, just as deep as that metal part of the trowel up to about this part of the handle somewhere like that that's basically right down to the subsoil here um i've just cleared this bed and put some fresh homemade compost on it I'm just going to plant any on, that are on the stalk like that. I'm just going to put that to the base. So these will be a little bit higher, but I don't think it matters. They do tend to grow, grow up the stem a little bit. But that top one is only a couple of inches below the surface, but that's, that's okay. Any of these tubers, I'm going to put right down about six inches nearly. Oh, down. That was about that. So yeah, probably about six inches. <clears throat> there you go. So that's um, another perennial veg bed planted. Don't have to do anything to this now. Just keep it weeded. Um, doesn't need to be netted or anything like that. So it saves me a net and some hoops for the the other um, beds because I do tend to get a bit short uh, so basically this time next year when I start digging them to harvest all I'll do is I'll dig them out and where I've dug I'll leave one or two in so as you go down the bed harvesting you just just leave a few in um, I might even be able to increase it a little bit because over there I mean there was a plant every every two or three inches you know and, and in a good year it they all produced good sized tubers so you know they say a spacing of a foot of plant five foot between rows but if this whole bed becomes jam-packed with them into the middle as well then it, it, i'll probably get a better harvest and i might just just let them fill it out a bit but we'll see how they do next year and um we'll see midsummer because you can tell by the foliage i mean i knew this year they weren't going to be very good after that heat wave, the foliage was just a bit sort of something and nothing really. It hadn't got very tall. It wasn't very lush. And uh, the deer had nibbled on it as well. Um, but yeah, so hopefully, hopefully these will do well. And I'll show them next year how they're coming on. But take it easy, guys, and we'll see you next time.